<laughs> Do you all know about Cockney rhyming slang? I, no, I don't. Okay. Well, it's not it's not a Stone story, but it's definitely a Zeppelin story. Oh, wow. Okay. Can, can we jump to Zeppelin and come back you, to Stones? You know what? The, this sort of ADHD thing works perfectly here, so I okay. love it, and, and it all comes he, together. He, he went off at a slight tangent, which is fine. We forgive him for that. <laughs> um, but actually, the story he was referring to is about Led Zeppelin. Now, I'm... Oh, oh, second one. I'm recording Zeppelin at Madison Square Garden, so the song remains the same. Now, this is at the end of their tour. If you know your history, if you've seen the movie, this is at the tail end of their tour, and Robert's voice is, uh, shall we say, not the greatest it should have been. And there were many, many problems with the movie. Some parts of it had to be reshot, actually, in London. They had to recreate Madison Square Garden stage in order to, because the idiot who was shooting it Completely effed it up. <laughs> but anyway, that's another story. Um, so we, a we asked Ro Robert, hey, man, do you mind, you know, re-singing a couple of these words? No, nah, no, nah, I don't want to do it. So I said, oi, Percy, how's your absence, mate? And now nobody's going to freaking know what Percy, how's your absence? Percy Plant was a little tiny character in black and white TV in England in the 60s. And that's how he got his nickname. No because way. it you know, Percy Plant, right? So we used to call him Purse or Percy. Hobson's Choice, voice, whistle and flute, suit, apples and pears, stairs. These are all Cockney rhyming slang phrases. And the, all the rock and roll bands from the 60s onwards used to take Cockney rhyming slang and make it their own. Wow. So that's how Percy got his nickname. I mean, Robert. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. Uh, working with Led Zeppelin, what, what was that like? I mean, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, they're probably my favorite rock band of all time. Mine too. Uh, and uh, I mean, again, how, how, do you, how, do you, how does that come about for you? How, how did you guys get connected? Well, I mean, it's so weird because I actually remember recording... Uh, Jimmy Page in ah, 60, fruff, 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 trying to figure the <laughs> date out. It's in the early 60s. There was a band called The Kinks, you may remember. Yeah. And that's Pagey playing. He was a great session guitar player. That's how he started. Cut to 67, when I'm working at Olympic, I started working with him again and, and John Paul Jones. They were session guys. You know, I did uh, Donovan, uh, Hurdy Gurdy Man, that kind of stuff. So I knew the lads. They came up with their first record, Zeppelin One, and it did very well. Then they came to the States in 69 to tour behind that record. They had a trunk full, I mean, literally a huge, big traveling trunk full of one inch eight track tapes, which they were working with for the Zeppelin Two. They came to New York and they called me up. Oh, uh, oh Eddie, do you want to uh, help us finish this record then? So we went in the studio, cut a whole bunch more tracks and did some overdubs and I mixed the whole thing at uh, A&R Studios in New York in two days, right? Eight tracks. Two days. Yeah, but this eight track tape, half, one inch eight track, right? Now, you know that song uh, is called Whole Lot of Something. <laughs> What's a whole lot of, uh, yeah. All right, you, you know that bit in the middle where he, Robert goes, woman, and then you hear this funny little voice in the background, woman, and way, way back with a lot of, okay. Biggest freaking mistake I ever made in my life which became part of history. Why? You may ask why. Why, Kramer? Why did you why? fuck it up? <laughs> well, because, okay, take, take this. Eight tracks. Track seven, vocal track. Track eight is the master vocal track. I'm sitting there, and it's not slide faders like you got here. It's these big-ass rotary volume controls, right? And I'm turning track seven off, and I can't get rid of the freaking vocal. And I looked at Jimmy and he's looking at me and we're going, oh, that's fun. And we both instinctively grabbed the big reverb send knob at the same time and cranked the crap out of it. And we're laughing our asses off as the tape is printing. And that woman becomes that woman way the fuck in the background. Wow. And, that was an and, error. Oh, so the, the, mo <laughs> the motto of the story is leave the goddamn mistakes in. Yay! <laughs> Does that upset you how people produce music these days where they oh. over refine and they're just Stop always, that. does it drive you nuts? It drives me freaking crazy because everybody's so like, oh, there's some hiss. What are you talking about? Rock and roll's got hair on it, for Christ's sakes.